بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أي لحظة في الله continue on in our study of obstacles that prevent one from making repentance we reach the beginning of the treaties which is by Sheikh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah Rahmatullah alayhi, Rahmatun wasiya. Where he said, he began by defining the linguistic definition of Toba. He said, the linguistic definition of Toba, whoever sought repentance renounces a certain matter. Hence, is to return from a certain action. The divinely legislated definition of a Toba, meaning the istilah. Shur'an is the act of returning from the disobedience to Allah or of Allah, the most high to his obedience. So leaving disobedience of Allah to, dis to obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his commandments. So this is the Islamic definition of Tawbah, of returning to Allah to Allah. The scholars mentioned the act of seeking penance is deemed obligatory for every sin committed, meaning we should make Tawbah for everything we do. If the act of disobedience has occurred between the slave and Allah the Most High, and is not connected to the human rights, then the conditions are three. And uh, Imam Anuwa, we outlined this very nicely in Riyadh Salihin, you'll find this. The first condition, the individual discontinues the disobedience. So the first thing, the first condition for Toba is that we leave off the sin. The second condition, the individual regrets his act. So the second condition is that you feel sadness. You feel regret that, of what you did. And the third condition, the individual resolves never to return to the act. So a person has stopped making the sin. They regret and feel sadness and remorse that they sinned. And the third condition is that they are determined to not return to that sin. That's very imperative that those are the conditions of Tawbah and that you don't leave off any of those. So, for example, if a person leaves a sin for whatever reason, but they don't feel sorrow about what they did, then this is not considered Islamic Tawbah. So then he said, if any of these three conditions are not fulfilled, the act of toba is not actualized. If the act of disobedience is connected to another individual, a fourth condition is involved. So meaning that if your, your sin involves the rights of someone else, then there's a fourth condition. The fourth condition, the individual is, obliga to, uh, is obligated to absolve himself from the victim. So that means you give them their right back. It is a most, it is a, a must upon the individual to seek repentance for his sins. So this is an obligation. If the individual seeks repentance from a portion of them, his toba is considered uh, correct according to the ulama for those particular sins. However, that which he remains doing continues to remain with him until he repents from that particular sin. Meaning if someone makes a general toba, uh, but they still involve themselves in certain sins. For example, if a person, uh, they drink alcohol, they smoke weed, they commit fornication, and they generally feel sorrow and they make a general toba for those things. But yet they don't leave off the the drinking of the wine. They can't help it. They like to have that occasional glass of wine, whatever the case may be. They continue to indulge in the sin. Then they're forgiven bi idnillah if they were sincere and those other conditions were met with regards to the other sins. But if they kept doing uh, drinking the wine, then of course their general repentance is not accepted for that sin. So they will still be held accountable by their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala for that sin until they leave it off and they meet the conditions of Tawbah.
obstacles that prevent you from making repentance. This is very imperative and this is the crux or the main aspect of the treaties. Disregarding one's sins. From the things that prevent one from making toba is paying little concern with the sins one commits. Belittling the sins one falls into, thinking one does not have to make repentance from them, considering they carry a light punishment, and this is a sign of one being misled and astray. And we ask Allah for health and strength. Anas said, you indulge in bad actions which are significant to you that are more that are no more significant to you than a hair while we consider them at the time of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam to be great destroying sins this is an imperative narration on the salaf on uh, a sahabi jalil anas bin malik radiyallahu ta'ala anhu where he referred to the fact that the companions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam radiyallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in that they considered actions that we consider minor we say oh that's just a minor sin this is one of the small sins it's not one of the major sins we we justify things or rationalize things as much as possible when in fact the companions viewed those things as like mountains as if a mountain was about to fall upon them that's how they viewed uh, things which we consider to be minor sins so the meaning they were very serious about their Islam. They were serious about their relationship with Allah Azza wa Jal. Well, we're very light. Okay, we say, well, you know, I just watch movies. Well, I only see the Muharramat in the movies. I don't watch pornography. Oh, I, I do this. I, I only listen to music occasionally. I only do this. I only do this. We see things. We take things very light. And matter of fact, we're so immersed in sins, most of us, that we take almost everything light. We say, well, you know, I don't commit, <clears throat> I don't commit adultery, but I do this, I look at this, I, I eat this, and I drink this, and, and so on and so forth, letting us know that we take sins very lightly. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala forgive us and bless us with ikhlas with abad and bless us to come close to Him and remove our sins. So it is not befitting for the one who has belief in Allah and His Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, to underrate his sins which he commits, but rather he should consider them to be great, and this will enable him to make toba and become remorseful over whatever sin he commits. Al-Uza'i used to say, the major sins are the, are the sins one commits, then considers it to be small, underrates it. And also he used to say, a man persisting upon a sin is a sign he considers it to be small. So this is very imperative that we don't underrate our sins, that we realize that all sin is something that we should avoid and that we should make toba from. And that this is an obstacle to making toba when you think something is small. If you think it's small, then you say, well, then you don't make toba from it. You just continue in it. You do it all the time and you just take it very lightly. Perhaps you make it stuck far, perhaps you don't. And this is something that we have to strive our best uh, to avoid. Ibn Abbas said, Any sin a person persists upon is a big sin. And no sin a person repents from is not a big sin. Ka'ab said, The slave commits a small sin and belittles it, feeling no remorse of neither repenting from it. And it becomes something considered great in Allah's sight. And the slave can commit a sin and show great remorse for it and repents greatly from it. And in Allah, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sight, deems it to be small and by which he forgives him for it. Fudayl ibn Iyad said, depending on how much one underrates a sin will depend how great it is with Allah. And any sin one deems to be great a great destroying sin will be deemed in Allah's sight to be a small sin. So it's imperative that we put our sins on the scale that we analyze what we do. We analyze our deeds and we seek forgiveness often like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam and we make toba to Allah and may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala bless us to be a source of guidance for us and bless us to be 
uh, a source of remind uh, this to be a reminder for us, all of us. And may Allah forgive us of our many sins. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Nabiya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.